It's another week, so that obviously means it's time for a brand new SUV. And this week, boys and girls, it's the Volkswagen T-Cross. It's the fifth model in Volkswagen's SUV family. It sits below the T-Roc, the Tiguan, the Tiguan Allspace and the Touareg in the range. And as it's based on the VW Polo, it rivals other super mini-based small SUVs like the Seat Arona, Mazda CX-3, Renault Capture and a car buyer favourite, the Citroen C3 Aircross. That's just four rivals. If I had to mention them all, I think I'd probably be here until next Christmas. So, is the T-Cross just another SUV that will fade into the background, or has it got the potential to really stand out? Well, before I answer those questions, make sure you subscribe to the channel, press the little bell icon so you're notified exactly when one of our videos goes live, and as ever, leave those comments below. So the T-Cross then. For the time being, it comes in four trims, two one-litre three-cylinder petrol engines, and there's no four-wheel drive option. It's slightly longer than a Polo and 110 millimetres higher off the ground too. It's your typical small SUV in the styling department too. Nothing too adventurous, although this full width light at the back looks quite smart. Now Volkswagen is making a big deal about the multitude of different ways you can personalise your T-Cross. Uh, it's nothing new, trust me, but it does allow you to choose from sort of really rather upmarket looking silvers to this really rather youthful and southern looking energetic orange. Uh, you can choose from different colour interior themes as well, but don't worry, you don't have to go for orange wheels on an orange car, because if you go for that, it can look a bit too um, easy jet. Oh, good Lord. Look how bright it is in here. It feels as though my retinas are going to be Burned. But I have to say, I do quite like the feeling of fun in here. Now, VW will sell you a number of different design packs for your T-Cross. You can choose this energetic orange, there's like a, a teal colour, all designed to add a feeling of youthfulness and fun in here. And it does do quite a good job. It's a lot more interesting than the equivalent Seat Arona, that's for sure. Another thing that's better than the Seat Arona and things like the Mazda CX-3 is the quality of the materials. Now, the, there's a bit of soft touch plastic up there, not too much of it. There is a few scratchy plastics, but the sort of general fit and finish in here is very good indeed, especially the touch points. You get this really lovely, chunky steering wheel and a nice feeling gear knob as well. Now, all cars get an eight inch touch screen. It's got this glass finish to it, so it looks really quite upmarket. It works very nicely, as we've come to expect from uh, VW systems. Um, top spec cars get uh, digital dials. If you don't have a top spec car, you can option it for £375, which is quite an expensive option, I have to say. Nothing wrong with the standard dials whatsoever. Storage wise, well, the door bins easily pass the car by a big bottle test. Look at that easily fits in there. A little slot down here, two USB charging ports. The uh, glove box is of a good size and there's a nice bit of storage under here, a little drawer under there, which is really very nice indeed. It's all quite simple when it comes to spec. There's an entry-level S with the 8-inch touchscreen, 16-inch alloys and sliding rear seats, but it only comes with the least powerful petrol engine. SE adds 17-inch wheels, adaptive cruise control and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, while SEL gets LED headlights, sat-nav, parking sensors front and rear, sports front seats with lumbar and climate control. There's also an R-Line model with sportier body styling, 18-inch wheels and digital dials. Remember I mentioned the design packs earlier on, where it's not just the dashboard pieces of trim, it's also the seat fabric. So this energetic orange design pack gets these sort of orange bits of trim and this rather dubious white leatherette. Not quite sure how long that will last when there are children back here. Speaking of children, well, VW have really thought about this back seat because there's easily reachable ice fix points. There's a tether point down there for a child a seat in the, in, the, in the front seat and when you fold down the rear seats there's a little clip there so that the seat belt doesn't get in the way. Look at that, really very nice indeed. Now the door bins easily pass the car by a big water bottle test, look at that. Now some models also have two USB charging ports which is very nice indeed. There's a huge amount of knee room actually for a small SUV, look at that. And thanks to that square shape 
lots of headroom as well. Now you can fit three people at a push. It must be said that the person sitting in the middle will be squabbling for a bit of shoulder room, but for short journeys it will be absolutely fine. And that's thanks in part to these really wide foot wells. Um, one thing that's really worth noting though is this back seat. Now much like the Citroen C3 Aircross, you can slide it forwards and backwards. So if you want a bit more extra boot space, you can slide the bench seat forward. But when you slide it all the way to its furthest position, you get virtually no knee room whatsoever. But that's not the worst thing about this rear bench seat. Follow me around to the boot. Because when you lift up the tailgate, da-da, can you see the problem? With the seats in their most forward position, there is an enormous gap between the boot floor and the seats. I mean, that type of gap, everything in the boot is going to fall down there and be lost forever, isn't it? And it doesn't even get any better with the variable boot floor. Now, it comes as standard on mid-level models and above. And when you raise it into its highest position, it does nothing to cover up that gap. It's a shame, really, because this is a very practical car. It's got the largest boot in its class. Uh, and also, the rear seats are really... Uh, straightforward to use as well. Just lift the catch and they're spring loaded and they fold down immediately. And just to show you the amount of size, or the amount of space in here, if I grab the car by suitcases, you can put loads and loads of luggage and stuff in here. In fact, when the seats are in their most forward position like they are at the moment, there's actually more space in here than there is in the T-Rock, the SUV VW from the class above. For the time being, it's perfectly straightforward when it comes to engines. There's a 1.0-litre three-cylinder turbo petrol that comes with 94, 113 bhp. There's a 5-speed manual for the 94 and the choice of a 6-speed manual or a 7-speed DSG auto for the 113 bhp. We've got the 113 brake horsepower 1.0-litre three-cylinder turbo petrol here mated with the 6-speed manual gearbox and it's a nice engine, as we've come to expect from VW Group with their one-litre three-pot turbos. It's a perfectly decent, nice little engine. It doesn't get that raucous when you uh, floor the throttle. It's quite zingy, quite energetic, willing to rev. It really is in its sweet spot from around 2,000 RPM and above. And yeah, it's nice around town and it provides good enough acceleration on the motorway as well. It's relatively economical too. You should get mid 40s MPG and the T-Cross emits between 111 and 115 grams per kilometre of CO2. Just like the engine, the gearbox is perfectly nice as well. It's not notchy, but it's not exactly slick either. It's just perfectly adequate. The steering, not a huge amount of feel, but again, what do you expect from a small SUV? It goes where you want it to and it doesn't make a huge fuss in doing so. It's just absolutely fine. In many ways this feels the same as the Seat Arona. Funny that because they're based on the same car. But the key difference between the two is the VW feels just slightly, ever so slightly more refined. There's not quite so much road noise kicked up. There seems to be a bit more sort of noise suppression inside the cabin. It just feels a bit more relaxing to drive. The ride is good too, even on the 17-inch wheels. The, it doesn't seem to clatter too badly into uh, potholes. The consequence to that is that when you turn into a corner, there is a bit of body roll. But this is not the kind of car that you're going to be hurling into corners, let's face it. It's just a very nice, comfortable ride, and it's quite quiet as well. I've actually changed my mind about the colour of this car. Stepping inside now, it feels as though I'm inside the Tiger from a Frosty's cereal packet. What with these black and orange stripes, it's all very, it's very vibrant. When you peel away all of the tinsel and taffeta on this dashboard, it is quite a, a dull and dreary interior. I'm not a particular fan of the grey plastic down here and the smooth plastic on the doors. It's all built very nicely, all feels very sturdy, but it is quite a normal interior that's been tarted up a little bit to add a bit of youthful feeling. And that's what this car is all about, really. It's a small SUV that's designed to appeal to youths and small families, young small families. And if that's what you're after, then the 
T-Cross is a pretty good small SUV. Pricey, but still quite appealing at the same time. Prices? Well, the range starts at £17,000 to just under £25,000. This one, with a few orange options, is £21,000. And this car does feel quite ordinary once you peel away all the sparkly stuff. It's been a long time coming, has the T-Cross, and now it's here as an attractive, likeable small SUV. Ignoring that badly thought-out sliding rear seat, the T-Cross is spacious and well-made. The only problem is that a lot of rivals do the same job for less cash. Don't go just yet, give my Seat Arona review a watch and our SUVs playlist. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.